Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to Simulation. Today we have a very, very special episode. We have Vasper Systems in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Peter and Sebastian Wasowski, mm -hmm. the co-founders. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the Thanks show. Thanks so much for having us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, so you guys are bringing a tremendous amount of experience to this industry and it's really hacking into human performance and human health. Peter has 35 year background in medical technology and vascular health. Correct. It's yeah. actually more than that. But it's more than that now. Yes. Holy cow. I'm 70 now, so it's 47 years. You look very damn good for 70. That's Thank right. you. Yeah, that's right. And you're like, that's right. I know. <laughs> I'm going to be like that too. <laughs> I'm lucky, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so give me a little bit of a background into, the meta, into this medical tech uh, industry and vascular health industry. So you've been working on this for over 35 years. Um, what have been these moments of, okay, the system looks this way currently. How can we figure out how to hack it to enhance human health and performance? Yeah, so this, actually we started the company in 2009. But uh, I have been working on the sort of a kitchen side of medicine for 47 years and uh, assisting in designing products um, and then designing a couple of my own products prior to this. What so, were those? So the, the most recent one before that uh, is a, the company is called Cool Systems. The product that they have out there right now is called Game Ready. And uh, <clears throat> this was where we commercialized the NASA cooling technology because once you put an astronaut into a spacesuit, of course, sweating doesn't work because there's no heat, no air exchange. So the only way to mm. cool an astronaut is with liquid cooling. Mm. And actually liquid is a, uh, is a temperature conductor where air is a temperature insulator. So it works better as well. Mm -hmm. So we designed a piece of equipment back then. This was in 1996 that uh, was designed to heal the joints after injury. And um, that company was sold to uh, Lee Steinberg, if you've seen the movie Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise, that was uh -huh. based on his life story. Okay. And, um, and he renamed the product Game Ready and they're quite well known in professional sports and a lot of amateur sports as well. And you mentioned that for astronauts, uh, it's an, air is an insulating cooling system, so you can't actually use air. Correct. You can use liquid. Yes. And that's uh, one of the, so with NASA being right there, Vasper is located right next to NASA Ames. Yeah. Well, we are at NASA Ames. At NASA Ames. And we are, actually the, the technical name for the space where we are is called NASA Research uh, it's a, a NASA, NASA, NASA Research Park, yep. NRP, and um, that's where a lot of the space shuttle components were built and uh, there's still a tremendous amount of research going on there uh, supporting small satellites, microsatellites that go up in large swarms and look at asteroids and things like that. So it's a very, very active center, a lot of amazing scientists. Uh, we've had a six-year research agreement with NASA to develop this technology for uh, space travel where, yep. and to reduce the amount of uh, time that astronauts use in space. Currently, they exercise over two hours every day. Yeah. So... Are, you, are they strapping in now in the ISS? Are they using... No. It? But the hopefully will soon? Uh, you know, soon is, is a very... Uh, delicate term when you talk about any kind of government project. Yeah. So I think private uh, space industry has demonstrated uh, very yes. uh, rapid advances in, in a short amount of time. So we, we hope to work with them as well. So then now the technology is coming into the homes of people that can exercise and also athletes, also hospitals, all these different locations. Correct. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, we are across the board on one end of the spectrum or with special forces, professional athletes, NASA astronauts. And on the other end of the spectrum, it's being utilized in cardiac rehab, geriatrics, physical therapy, and then everybody in between. So our oldest clients are in their late 90s using this on a regular basis. And then some of the world's top athletes and um, special forces guys on the other end of the spectrum. Wow, yeah. a lot of different people using this yeah. and using it to hack into their performance and their health. So 
the system that you've built now, this is a very classic exercise bike, right? Yeah. The bike's classic. Mm -hmm. And then what is different is the cooling, the liquid cooling system, and then the proprietary software component as well. Yeah. Those two things mixed together. Exactly. Cooling compression as well as uh, very specific uh, interval protocols that we've developed. Yes. So we, the idea is to be a force multiplier for exercise. So normally when you exercise for an hour, let's say, it takes you at least the same time to recover from that. And of course it usually involves showers and, and uh, ex extended recovery time where yeah. we can uh, you're on the bike for, for 21 minutes. It's a 20 minute interval exercise with uh, one minute cooling and then 10 minute cooling on a table yep. and you're totally recovered. So, and you don't need to take a shower. So a lot of the side effects such as sweating, uh, discomfort uh, and long recovery, we removed and we actually enhanced the benefit of exercise. So we mm -hmm. make the brain think that you just ran up a giant mountain and did CrossFit on top of it and the brain responds as though you did. So uh, yeah. any doctor will tell you that exercise is the best form of medicine. Yeah. And most people actually don't exercise enough. Yes. Uh, some over-exercise. And uh, this is, seems to be an ideal platform for anybody from as young as nine years old to as old as 97 years old mm -hmm. with you know, professional athletes and military can use this platform and benefit tremendously. Yeah. So the cooling and compression, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have four total cooling and compression straps. Yeah. We're gonna have one on each bicep, and then we're, and that's gonna be this motion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're gonna have one on each thigh, on each quad and hamstring. And then that's gonna be for this motion with the legs. Yeah, so what, what the whole system is designed to do is to stimulate your body's production of anabolic hormones. All right, let's so, un unpack that for us. Sure. Anabolic hormone. Yes. So these are the hormones for any type of turnover, rebuilding, regeneration in the body. Mm -hmm. They require anabolic hormones. The primary one that's produced by our pituitary gland is growth hormone. Mm -hmm. So we tend to see a decline about 14% every 10 years past puberty. Wow. And that's what most people would consider to be just normal aging. Yeah. You know, and there's a, there's a saying in, in anti-aging that our hormones don't decline because we age. We age because our hormones decline. Uh -huh. And the way that you fight that trend is through exercise, but specifically intensive anaerobic exercise, because it's only through high intensity exercise that we actually stimulate our body's production of growth hormone and other anabolic hormones. So that's arguably the single greatest, most significant benefit of exercise. VASPR is a means of initiating that benefit through a much lower threshold than is normally involved. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna be, so this cooling compression is gonna be stimulating the production of anabolic hormones. Correct. And is that gonna start as soon as the cooling and the exercise begins, or does that usually come after the anabolic hormones come after? So this is something that, um, uh, the, you know, the basic principle behind this technology could be, is known as biomimicry, imitating nature. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here is we're imitating a physiology that you naturally see in children. So whenever you see four, five, six, seven year olds, you don't see those people walking, they're always going full speed ahead. <laughs> if you were to look inside their quads, yeah. you would see very highly concentrated amount of lactic acid. And the reason concentration is high is because the legs are small, the bodies are small, and they they're always in motion. So <clears throat> the lactic acid is the waste product of the muscle tissue being used. Mm -hmm. And the higher the concentration, not the amount, the higher the concentration of lactic acid, the stronger the feedback to the brain, specifically to the pituitary gland, requesting additional growth, growth hormone, hormone levels to rebuild those muscles back to pre-exercise condition. Interesting. So children, of course, do this all the time. And, and when they run- high concentration of lactic acid versus mass adults have a lower concentration of lactic acid until we exercise, and then we get a higher concentration. Okay, well, th that's very true. What you just said is very true. I, I would like to sort of unpack it a little bit. Yeah. So <clears throat> whenever you uh, see children and they run around all day, they sleep very well at night. Uh. At night, between the second and third stage of sleep, just before your REM sleep cycle, the brain produces 50% of our daily hormone levels. Mm -hmm. 50%, that's a lot. So most people do not get it. This is why the 
energy drink business is doing so well and coffee business is doing so mm -hmm. well because we need to basically kickstart the brain when we wake up in the morning and get the pressure up yeah. which caffeine does quite well yeah yeah of course children never ask you for coffee when they get up right they're full of energy and they do it all over again so <clears throat> What we're basically doing with this technology is mimicking or duplicating a similar physiology in an adult body that you see naturally occurring in a child. So by putting compression on the upper legs, quads and biceps, and putting you through this exercise protocol, we are preventing the lactic acid escaping from the muscle by compressing it. Therefore, we're concentrating it under the compression, hacking the brain basically that you just destroy the muscle tissue. Yeah, yeah. Or in fact, there. you did not. Go so, down there and put, give me more growth hormone. Exactly. Down there. And normally, the lactic acid is escaping. It's being swept away by the venous system, by the by blood the throughout, the, throughout the cell. Right. Okay. And that's why you normally need 60 minutes to have, get a concentration of lactic acid. But if you can compress and cool, you can hack the brain into getting you that growth hormone faster. Yeah. Well, it depends, you know, how, how many minutes you need depends on the type of exercise you do. But the bottom line is that. Uh, intense, very intense exercise, anaerobic exercise especially, also leads to overtraining because then you're basically damaging your yeah. cartilage, you're damaging uh, some of those other tissues in your body and, uh, and there's some injuries that are tied to, to this. So with this platform, this is sort of like an anti-overtraining device because we hack the brain into thinking you damage the, the body tissues where you haven't the brain is responding with this additional, as Sebastian said, anabolic hormones, hormones that rebuild your body. And you can actually use that for additional energy to be your top performer during a competition. Um, you sleep much better because it lowers your nighttime stress hormone, plus a lot of other health-related benefits without the damage. Mm -hmm. Now, that does not mean that this replaces conventional exercise. Yeah. This is a very great foundational platform. So yes. once you do that first, yes. the other exercise, you just, you're just much, much better at it because you recover faster, you have more energy, more strength, you have more blood oxygen on board. Yes. It just goes much better. Because then there are all the other muscle groups of our body, like our lats and our calves and our triceps and our forearms and, and traps. Yeah. There's so many other areas of our body that still need to get exercise that that can be targeted at a later time as well. This is the vascular component at a uh, foundational level of exercise that's really important. So, yeah, so this is the primary principle behind it. There's another secondary principle that's very important to mention, and that is the temperature control. So normally when we exercise, we sweat, and there's yes. a tremendous amount of blood that goes to the surface of the skin uh -huh. in order for us to sweat. The skin is the biggest organ in the body, six and a half million pores. And each one of us has a very finite amount of blood on board, which happens to be close to 8% of your body weight. So if you're looking at a 100-pound person, there's 8 pounds of blood there, yeah. slightly more than a gallon. If that person is exercising with intensity, conventionally exercising, a lot of that blood goes to the surface of the skin, which uh -huh. means you don't have enough blood at the muscle level where you need it. Uh -huh. And this is why if, when you finish intense exercise, you have delayed onset of muscle soreness. You have sore muscles for a day or so. Uh -huh. because there, there was not enough blood there to remove the lactic acid, therefore it gets stored in the muscle tissue until it can be removed through the vascular system. Oh, and the compression so, helps the blood drive to that area to help remove the lactic acid? No. 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 So, uh, so I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah. I'm still learning. So just stay with me for a second. Yes. So, uh, there's two, there's two negatives of, uh, or there's two negative side effects of conventional exercise if it's, if it's done with a lot of intensity. So one is that you have residual lactic acid in the muscle tissue. Yes. The second one is that your whole core body temperature goes up and blood temperature goes up as well. So blood is mostly water. So imagine if you heat water, you can actually see the uh, oxygen escaping. If you heat water long enough, it'll disappear. So on a different scale, the same thing happens with the bloodstream. So as our temperature goes up, mm -hmm. and look at the 100-pound person with, uh, you know, 8%, uh, which is uh, 8 pounds of water, of blood, slightly more than a gallon, that blood actually goes up in temperature, and it starts blowing off blood oxygen. Blood oxygen is what the muscles live on. 
So the less blood oxygen you, ha you have on board, the quicker you will not be able to perform. So in uh, normal athletic terms, you hit the wall, you can no longer perform. In scientific terms, you hit what's called the VO2 max. You hit the ability to metabolize oxygen. Once that happens, okay. your performance goes south. So what we're doing okay. here is by, <clears throat> by cooling you on the, on the, during the exercise, we're cooling your back, the back of your pelvis. We're yes. cooling the compression areas. We're also cooling your feet. Yes. Uh, the reason we cool your feet is when you're under a hot blanket and you stick your foot out when yeah, you're too correct. hot, right? So yeah. your feet are your thermostats and radiators. Yeah. When we cool all these parts of anatomy, we are preventing the core body temperature from going up, yeah. which means that all the blood is at the muscle level because you're not sweating or minimal sweating. Oh, so normally the blood goes to the skin level, like you were explaining exactly. earlier, because you're getting really hot. That's right. And the process of perspiration involves blood being shunted to the surface of the skin, and then you lose blood within the muscle, you lose oxygen in the muscle, and that's the fuel that you need to perform. So from an athletic perspective, you're always going to perform better in a cooler environment. An example of this is they compiled marathon data and found that 51 degrees was actually optimal environmental temperature for human performance, wow. which is much colder than what most people would expect. Now yeah, that, yeah. that temperature will go up for a shorter race, I mean that's over 26 miles, but yeah. it still highlights the fact that when we're cooler, when the blood is in the working muscle as opposed to yep. facilitating perspiration, we're performing at a higher level from an athletic standpoint. And when so, you walk out the door initially, it might be really cold, but then once you get running, it feels really good. Right. You're not sweating as much at 51 degrees. Not at all. That concentration of blood's in your muscles and oxygen's yeah. in your muscles. Exactly. You're retaining more oxygen, which enables you to perform at a higher level. So the cooling here enables the user to be as powerful as possible and as efficient as possible for the 21-minute protocol, driving a stronger physiology for ultimately the desired effect, which is optimizing your hormone profile. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. So this is already cooled. No, it's, it's not turned on. Yet. Not as turned soon as on. we turn it on. So the water is in here, though. The water the is in there. So water. Okay. So let's 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 just do a quick a quick bit on on this real quick. So so this ask this part is cooling the water. Correct. And then it's sending it through to the different to the back, the pelvis, the arm, and the all four cuffs. There's a supply and a return. So you can see there's two cords going to all the sides yes. of the cooling. Yes. And that includes the seat, the foot pads, as well as each cuff. So there's cold water going in. We're able to maintain a, a pressure that we set for each limb. And then the water's also coming out. So it's circulating around the limb, as well as through the seat, as well as through the, Not the, the foot small. pads. So yeah. That's, yeah. That's what enables for a more effective heat exchange. That's going to enable you to be as powerful as possible for the 21 minutes. Because the cold, because you have cold, the cold water running through, and then as it yeah. uh, absorbs into my body, then the hot water will come back out and it'll get recooled, and it's, it's a cycle. It's a constant motion. And um, how do you how do you know? Um, oh, is it it's split down the middle? So then it runs on this side and it loops back around and then up. Precisely. Right. Yeah. Precisely. Cool. All yeah. right. The water is going to be about 40 to 45 degrees in temperature. Okay. Yeah. This is like swimming without getting wet. <laughs> swimming without getting wet. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All you right. have a benefit of a cool swimming pool. Awesome. Yeah, we can put that in here. Yeah. Strap it in. So I'll let Sebastian take you through. Okay. Sounds good, Peter. We'll have Sebastian do that and then we'll talk to you more soon. Awesome. Turn off the Perfect. Market. All right, go ahead, put your feet in the pedal. Foot in the pedal, okay. So we're gonna start with the right leg, with the right quad. We want this as high as possible okay. on the quad. We wanna create as much real estate as we can between the end of the cuff and the top of the knee. Okay. So I'm gonna come through here, yep. grab. And then let's go as high up as possible. Yes, please. Awesome. There okay, we go. Okay, cool, so there's like a whole, there's a little metal bar that yeah, so that yeah. enables you to put it on yourself if you were, you know. Oh, okay. If you own let's, one let's, of these, let's try. Let's try that on the another on the other arm. Sure. Okay. Okay. So now we put it up high. This is right next to the shoulder, right yeah. next to the shoulder on the bicep. All so right. Let's try and put the this other one on. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So now we're going to go slide all the way up, throw it into this loop. We want this tube kind of right in line with the IT band and then coming off the side of the hip. Is that about in line? Yeah, it looks, looks good. good. Looks okay. Good. 
and then. So if you grab the handle, uh -huh. pull one direction with that, and then the other one with the, the flap, and you kind of wrap it around. Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. So it tightens it with this. Got it. And then you pull it down like that. Yeah. Okay. That's a good wrap. That's a good wrap? Yeah. Okay, it was tight. Tight enough? All right. And the high, high up enough, looks like. Yeah, we'll get the last one on here. Okay, cool. You work out pretty regularly? Uh, at least a decent amount of uh, like like uh, body weight exercise and, and running and yoga. Gotcha. Decent, but not enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me start that's, you out here. That's what we do for you guys at Simulation. We host lots of shows, and I need to work out more. So. All right. So you're gonna feel Interesting. Some, some cooling and some pressure start to fill into the cuffs right now. So I'm already starting to feel the cold water come in. You can see it right here coming in. Yep. Yeah. So I'm feeling pressure right now uh, on all f on all four of the cuffs. So it, so is the pressure also coming? Is it coming mostly from the water or is there added air pressure as well? No, it's all water. It's all water pressure. Yeah. And that's really wow. what separates us from any other blood flow restriction technologies that are on the market. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a huge differentiation there in not only the cooling and the liquid chilled element, but the fact that we're covering a much wider surface area with a lesser compression gradient. And then instead of combining blood flow restriction with you know light load weight lifting at 20% of your one rep max, yeah. actually combining it with a 21 minute dynamic interval based workout. So the synergy between all those elements is extremely powerful. Uh, it, it really, it's already starting to feel really good. I'm right here on my back and my pelvis as well. So I'm going to shift you forward here just to get a feel for the cuff. Okay. We want to let it fill up just a little bit more before we get started. The way this protocol is structured. How do you know, yeah, how to how to write, put in the right amount of leg pressure and arm pressure? So there there is a governor, there's sort of a max that you want to go. Yeah. I turned it up a little bit just for the sake of it filling up faster. Oh. Okay. But we're gonna just keep you at 70 right 70 now. 70 on leg pressure and 50 on arm pressure? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And we typically don't exceed 80 in the legs or 55 in the arms. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the way the protocol is structured is there's gonna be a seven minute warm-up followed by seven sprints alternating between 30 and 15 seconds. Ron, are you able to see the screen? Yeah. Cool. So then, so then as you, as you see, um, the time elapses here on the x-axis and on the y-axis is the level of intensity. Yeah. So you guys, so the first seven minutes is a warm-up. Exactly. And then it goes into high intensity interval training. Precisely. On the second uh, 14 minutes. So then we're gonna have a period of 30 seconds of high intensity, then a break, yeah. uh, then a slower part, and then a 15 seconds of super high intensity, and then a break. So, okay, so you're, still, you're leveraging the um, high intensity interval training as well. Absolutely, yeah. So the science behind interval training is amazing, and we're banking on some of that existing science yes. in conjunction with the cooling, with the compression, and that's really what makes this one of the most powerful fitness and rehabilitation technologies in existence. Seven so minute warm up, followed by seven sprints, alternating between 30 and 15 seconds. The red line represents your power output. That's and you, right. You wanna try to plot that red line in between these parallel yellow lines that's throughout right. the whole workout. So because that's the ideal amount of wattage that I should be outputting. It's, it's sort of like a target zone, so we know you're working hard enough to create enough lactate, yes. concentrate that, and drive the effect yes. that we're going for. Yes, yeah. so, in, so you gotta put out an output, uh, at least a certain amount of output in here for, um, for you, for the lactic acid to concentrate to high enough levels in your uh, muscles to get the full experience of the 60 yeah. minute. But yeah. this can be customized for any level of fitness, any level of endurance. So I, I set you up on like a, a pretty good protocol today. I feel like you're up to it. Let's do it. And then, you know, if you were a 96 year old with a hip replacement, this exact protocol could be customized for, for your that use. level of endurance and what that's your goals awesome. are. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So then, then that's what you, that's why you have all the different styles of people that are using this from nine to 97. If yeah. you can benefit from exercise, if you can benefit from movement, then you are our client. Yes. So that's 99.9% yes. of people, I'd say. Let's do it. All right, you ready? Yep. So go ahead and start moving back and forth. There it is. All right, so we see the red line coming up. Yeah. So I need to go a little bit harder it's to just, get into that, yep, into that range. 
Nice. Okay. So I think anywhere between 60 and 150. 60 and 150. This is watts. a pretty wide okay. range. So. Okay. Uh, but so perfect. You're in between the two. Interesting. So this is the warm up pace. This is. Yeah. We're going to have some fun with the sprints yeah. for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I first saw you guys at the Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within in San Jose. Yeah. And I was really, really grateful to have been introduced to um, Chloe and your team and your machine up there because I immediately thought, because there was a bunch of other biohacking stuff up there like, um, like a like a cryo chamber yeah. and stuff like that, and I noticed your machine, and I immediately talked to you guys about about it because I thought it was very innovative and like what's going on, and and I'm happy that it's you know Tony obviously cares a lot about trying to hack human performance and health, so it seemed like a really good fit yeah. for you guys to be working with him, and now he has a couple of these machines and um, he does yeah yeah he's such an amazing guy and. Uh, if you look at his schedule and how intensive his travel is and the amount of energy that he has to put out at these events, you know, changing lives all around the world, yep. um, being able to maintain that vitality, he has a lot of different methods of doing so. And we're, you know, couldn't be happier that Vasper is now one of those official methods. Hell yeah. So uh, we were lucky enough to showcase Vasper at UPW San Jose, which was a fantastic event. Yep. And then I just came back from London where we did the same thing at UPW London, which awesome. was equally incredible. So um, yeah, very, very blessed to, to know Tony and for him to be a fan of what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And now you have other athletes that are involved, um, other people that really uh, need this for their health. Absolutely. That's so great. Yeah. You're making a direct impact on people's lives. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's been quite the journey over the last 10 years of, of getting it to where it is today. But the, the scientific validation, the demand, the traction, the momentum behind the technology has never been stronger. So it's absolutely an exciting time for us. Um, there's a growing number of medical professionals, medical institutions that are recognizing how revolutionary this is and incorporating it into their practice, into their offering, and then a rapidly growing number of professional sports teams, yep. athletes, performance organizations who are seeing the same benefits. So uh, it's a lot of fun meeting these people. It's a lot of fun yeah. making a direct impact. Yep. Um, but the, the most rewarding group to work with yeah. is anybody who lacks the physical capacity to engage in high intensity exercise. Yeah. It's, it's really for them that those are some of the most powerful case studies that we have. Because you bring them into the 20 minute interval instead of the 60 minute one. Oh, it's, they, in many cases, people, you know, due to illness, condition, injury, um, they just simply lack the physical capacity to ever be able to mimic the physiology or create the physiology of an intensive anaerobic exercise. Yes. So they're essentially missing out on that downstream anabolic effect. It's entirely out of reach to them based on whatever physical limitations that they have. And that's what Peter was mentioning earlier is that you guys are biomimicking the physiological effect. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when they come on, um, some of the case studies and, and the impact that it can have even in the matter of four or five sessions is absolutely, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to even put into words and some of it sounds like unbelievable. But we've been really, really blessed to work with a lot of people and, and have a direct impact. So, uh, so what is this number one feeling that people are getting when they're uh, finishing up? Because you, you were mentioning people that have health that's yeah. unable to get to those high intensity interval physiologies. Yeah. What, what do they say when they're done with you? So the most common and immediate benefits that people report using the system, um, the most common one across all demographics is major improvement to quality of sleep. Hell yeah. Which is really, really exciting. Yeah. And um, like Peter mentioned earlier, it's between the second and third stage of the REM cycle that half of our growth hormone is released, 50%. Wow. So if, for anybody that is lacking quality sleep and effectively making it through that REM cycle, yeah. they're essentially missing out on half of their body's rejuvenative capacity. Okay, okay so now let's, let's break that down more. Yeah. So, uh, so if, if people are uh, missing the REM stage between two and three, the REM yeah. cycle between two and three, yeah. so if people miss that, mm -hmm. then they're missing on their growth hormones. Half, half of their potential growth hormone release only occurs then. 
So that's why quality of sleep is absolutely paramount Huge. to every facet of, of health. And let me check in with you really quick on yeah. the session here. Yeah, we're five minutes in. We're five minutes in. We're almost at the fun part. Yeah. Are you feeling some of that burn in the quads? I'm feeling some of the burn in the quads and in the biceps. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's great when we have it in both places. The quads is where we have the most, most, muscle, yeah. most muscle mass, so greatest opportunity to produce and concentrate lactate and other metabolites. Um, but when you get when you get the burn going in the arms, it's just that much better. Yeah. The more that you can drive through the plate with the heel of your foot, with the heel of the, the foot, the more that quadricep you're going to engage, and you'll feel the burn go up in the process. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Use your heel more than your front of your foot. I mean, you don't need to overemphasize it, but when you have that flat force, or when the force is kind of spread out through the whole bottom of your foot, yeah. you're engaging more of the quadricep, producing a little bit more lactate and we're just sending that much stronger a signal to the pituitary. So if, if you think about exercising without compression, the lactic acid is constantly swept away by the venous system, by the blood. Uh -huh. So to create a comparable yep. concentration of lactate, you would need to bust your butt for, in many cases, over an hour of pretty intensive work. And that's what's so unique about this, is in a matter of a few minutes, most people feel the burn that they would normally feel towards the tail end of a workout without being out of breath, without being overheated, you know, still being able to have a conversation through the process. Yeah. Yeah. Just being able to sit here and feel what you're saying. Yeah. I'm trying to understand the, what's going on biologically and physiologically, like you're describing. Yeah. That the venous system is unable to sweep away the lactic acid. Because of the pressure. Because we're yes. reducing that superficial blood flow, which would normally be sweeping away the lactate throughout your exercise. Yeah. And when that's happening, you really need to put in significant wear, tear, time, effort to produce a concentration strong enough that'll trigger your body's production of anabolic hormones. So here we are through the first sprint, keeping it going. First one's the hardest one. Nice, there we are, we're in the range. Excellent. Nice work. You got it, 10 more seconds. Here's our high intensity intervals. Nicely done. All right, so now we're gonna slow it down. So much slower than the pace you were currently warming up at. Yep. We want the watts below 30 for the next below 90 seconds. 30, yep. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Even more, even more. The fun part about, usually right about now, is when you feel the burn increase uh, quite a bit, actually. As you disengage from that first sprint, you kind of, the muscles relax a little bit. The burn in many cases kind of shoots up and it feels like mm -hmm. you're doing a weighted squat or riding your bike straight up a mountain, which is a weird dichotomy of things because it's at a lesser resistance and a lesser stretch per minute. Uh-huh, because yeah. that's what it would be like to be on the lowest setting on the bike, lowest gear setting, and pedaling up slowly. Yeah, yeah. And then what we were doing the, in the high intensity was we were pedaling very, very quickly, trying to get up much faster. At a lower gear. At so a this, lower this gear. feels like a higher gear and at a lesser strides per minute. So the resistance is much less right now. Oh yeah. But because that's right. you've sort of disengaged from the sprint, the cuff is able to tighten up just a little bit because of the displacement of the water from the, the muscle engagement. And then it further compresses the lactate produced during the sprint. So it's actually when people disengage in between the sprints that they'll often feel the burn even, even more than during the sprint. Yeah, that kind of felt, okay, I'm gonna analyze that this time. Yeah. Got it. So the next sprint is going to be half as long, 15 seconds. But more intense. But the trade-off is, is there's two additional levels of resistance. Oof. Yeah. Okay. So you just did 30 at 10. We're about to do 15. No, 30 at 8, 15 at 10 now. There it is. A little bit more. Keep going, keep going. Nice. You got it. Five seconds all the way through. Killing it. <sighs> I don't know what Peter's talking about, no sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so we I, have some sweating still. I put you on a, on a fairly challenging protocol. And um, so there, there might be some perspiration that still occurs. Definitely. Considerably less considerably than if the cooling less. weren't in place. Like if, yeah. if we weren't cooling you, actively cooling you throughout your body, you might be dumping buckets. I'm a sweater yeah. when I exercise. Me too, I'm I'll hairy. get on here, I'll still glisten, I'll sweat a little bit. Yeah. But um, you know, in the R&D days, I, I did this without the cooling before, and I, I can tell you it's a totally different experience. The cooling, like you said, is what is 45 degrees Fahrenheit? Yeah. And it's all around my, yeah. all around my body, especially on my back, and so I'm sweating way less much, than much I would less. be when I was, because I'm, I'm super hairy too, so I sweat a lot. Yeah, I noticed that. You guys know how hairy I am. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> you're like, I noticed that. Uh, yeah, I'm sweating way less. Yeah. yeah. And I felt that burn. Um, I really did feel it when I got off of the high intensity interval Absolutely. into the cool. So the, the cooling does a number of things. One is it actually helps mitigate some of that discomfort of rapidly concentrating lactate in the muscle. Uh huh. Um, it lowers the perceived level of exertion during the exercise, which is actually important. So it, it makes this whole experience a lot more pleasant than yeah. it would be otherwise. Yeah. And even more than that is it enables you to perform at a higher level like we spoke about earlier. Yeah. You know, it's instead of all that blood being shunted to the surface of the skin to help facilitate perspiration and cool yourself down, we're able to keep more blood in the working muscle, which means we have more oxygen in the working muscle, which means you can perform at a higher level, create a stronger physiology to drive the desired effect. Yeah. So this is, this is like a, a way to harness your foundational biochemistry to influence your endocrine system. Okay. If that makes sense. Well, let's unpack that after the sprint, <laughs> yes. Are you crushing it? Yes. Nice work, man. Okay, so run us through that one more time. Biochemistry and endocrine system. So by, again, reducing that blood flow, rapidly concentrating lactic acid and other metabolites, the strength of that concentration is the signal that your brain receives yeah. to restore the muscle to the yeah. pre-exercise state. Yeah. So we're essentially mimicking the physiology of a much more intensive workout. Yes. Your brain is responding accordingly. I gotta rebuild the, the muscle to the pre-exercise state, the pre-exercise condition. Anabolic hormones dump, they flood your body, and it's a systemic benefit that we're working to elicit. So we're actually optimizing the entirety of your endocrine profile. It's not just the increase in anabolic hormones that's significant, it's also the decrease in cortisol, specifically nighttime cortisol. Cool, yeah, yeah that's crucial. So that's what correlates with the improvement in sleep quality, which again is, is the most common and immediate benefit that people report. You guys decrease cortisol? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, by very significant degrees, actually. And cool. sometimes the, the drop in nighttime cortisol can actually be more significant than the increase in anabolics. I had good sleep after Vasper. I can't I'm, tell you how many people tell us that. I'm, a, I'm excited to do it sleep again tonight. Absolutely. It's important to get eight hours of sleep though. You know, more, eight hours is great if yeah. you can do it. More important than the quantity is the quality, quality. of that sleep. Is yeah. how much time you're spending in the REM cycle. Yep. That's where that true rest, rejuvenation, and healing occurs. So I think, you know, four or five hours of great rest is better than nine hours of crappy sleep. Yes. Yeah. There it is. So when you can Oh, that one's intense. That was a good one. Yeah. We're getting there. We're 13 and a half minutes in. So three more sprints. Three more sprints. Two thirties and a fifteen. Two thirties and a fifteen. So you only got a minute fifteen of hard work left. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. At this point, I'm, I'm going to assume you got a pretty steady burn going in the quads. Super steady burn in yeah, the quads, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's the consistency of that burn that most people are, are unaccustomed to. Oh, like yeah. Because normally I only get this burn when I'm doing my squat. Yeah, at the end of it. You at the end, yeah. Yeah, on that eighth and ninth rep, yes. it's like full fire in yes. the quads. And it's a feeling that most people associate with slowing down, with taking a break. Yes. Um, whereas here, we're pretty much maintaining it at a fairly constant clip for 21 minutes. So. The first session especially can take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many like, you know, accomplished athletes will be halfway through on their first sprint and they're like, I don't know if I can finish this. And in every single case they can, when people come back for the second session, you know, they have it under their belt, they know what to expect. And again, we have, we have clients in their late 90s who are benefiting tremendously from this as well. The, you were explaining it so well, because right when we're finishing up our workout, mm -hmm. uh, those last couple reps, and we're putting the bell down um, or the stack of weights down, mm -hmm. that is the moment that we go, oh, that feels good, I'm so sore right now. Yeah. And then it goes away. Yeah. It goes away, but right now I have this lasting feeling going on yeah. on my muscles. Totally. And it's lasting even through this low part of the- Through the interval part. Through that's, the interval. That's really sort of a mind trip when you first feel it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Nice. Nice job. 
Crushing it. Woo! You got this. Here we go. Over halfway. Final 10 seconds. Strong finish all the way through. That's how you do oh, it. That is good stuff. <laughs> Holy cow. When you can spell your name with the red line, that's when you've turned pro on. When you can spell your name? With the red line, oh, as in you can actually, yeah, ta tailor like it to your crazy etch a sketch oh, for funny, athletes. No, nobody's been able to do that yet. <sighs> I still make oh. the joke on everybody's first session, though. Yeah, etch a sketch your name into it. Yeah. Um. So, give me a, give me an idea of what the, um, what does SPM mean? Strides per minute. Strides per minute, cool. Yeah. So your watts is a formula that's generated between the resistance level and your strides per minute. Okay, And that's, Got a, that's it. a rough estimation that makes sense. of your yep. power output. Yep. Yeah. Because right now we're on resistance level four. Correct, in between okay. the sprints. And then when we get to this 15 second, it'll automatically jump up to 10. To 10. Boom, you hit it hard Shit. for 15, and yep. then we bring it back down to four, and then again, you'll have that final 30 second sprint at level eight. At level eight, yeah. cool. And then what are the levels? Um, it goes from zero to what, 15? 15, or 15 or exactly, 15? yeah. So there's probably 30, 35 different protocols within the software with variants around sprint frequency, duration, intensity, and so forth. Depends on how good the athlete is, right. Depends on what type of a workout you're going for as it fits uh, yes. into your routine that day, yes, yes, how you yes. slept the night before, yes. what your goal is tomorrow. Yes. So we'll make those adjustments for people all the time. Um, a lot of athletes will approach this as sort of an active recovery tool, an active recovery system, yep. where they're you know, stimulating a, a response from the endocrine system that's going to help them recover from the much more significant workload that they're putting in outside of the vascular. So that's where this is this force multiplier, where it's optimizing your endocrine profile for a greatly enhanced performance much more significant gains from the work that you're putting in and a greatly expedited and enhanced recovery. Yep. In the same way that steroids would help you in all three categories, uh -huh. this is tapping into your body's endogenous production yes. of those same agents. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Endogenous, not exogenous. So exactly. it's all coming from within. And also, so you guys have mentioned the endocrine system a bunch. So that's where you said the pituitary, pitu Pituitary. Pituitary, <laughs> pituitary gland yeah. is secreting growth hormone to the areas of the body where there's a high amount of lactic acid. So the pituitary is in your brain. Yep. And growth hormone is the most abundant hormone secreted by the pituitary gland. Okay. And it's released in response to intense exercise and deep sleep. And deep sleep. So Got this it. essentially just okay. zeroes in on the science of reju rejuvenation through exercise and is engineered to maximize that effect at a lower threshold. And am I doing that same thing during the deep sleep? Am I getting the growth hormone? If you are, if you are effectively making it through that REM cycle and you're getting good yeah. quality sleep, absolutely. Then yeah. And cool. hopefully in response to today's session, you'll get a particularly good night's rest tonight, which is again, across the board, everybody reports that. I need to learn more about the endocrine system and the vascular system both. Just the human anatomy in general, we don't talk about that enough. Like the GI tract, we've had microbiome analysis on here. It's all connected. It's all so connected. It's all absolutely connected. And your hormones and your endocrine profile is, is at the foundation of almost every pro season system in your body. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are suffering from chronic, chronically elevated levels of cortisol. You know, which correlates to visceral weight gain, belly fat, inflammation, yes. poor sleep. Yes. Um, everybody's overstimulated, overstressed, and they're not getting the quality rest that they really need to rejuvenate themselves and to heal. So, exercise helps across the board on all of those things, and this is just a concentrated dose of the most significant benefits of working out. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm chatting you up in the middle of the sprint. High five. Nice, dude. Holy cow. That was cow. the last one. You threw the worst of it. So good. I am feeling like I just worked out for an hour. Fantastic. For sure. We're going to get you off to the, the best part, which is immediately afterwards. Yep. You've been to a yoga class. Yes. You know how at the end of yoga, you lay there in Savasana? Yes. This is our version of that. 
We're gonna elevate your legs. We're gonna put you on a cooling pad. We're gonna allow your breathing and heart to come to its resting rate. Yes. And it's gonna act as a transition between the session, the rest of your day. Yes. And most importantly is we wanna send that hard stop signal to your body, to your brain, uh -huh. that the workout is over, the intensity is over. Let it know that you've transitioned into a relaxation phase and that can sort of help coax along that downstream anabolic effect we're looking for. Yeah, so you're the same thing. I like how you um, made it relatable to yoga in the sense that it is um, with yoga when you lay down at the end of class. Yeah. That's you telling your body, hey, we're done with yoga. Yeah. Re relax now. And it's the same thing here. We're telling our body, especially our pituitary gland too. It's an opportunity to sort of integrate the physiology and integrate the benefits. Yeah, you know, so that's, integrate so it's them. An, in, in yoga, it's an extremely important process. It's the same idea here. Yeah, and so it's like you said, it's a stepping stone into the rest of, absolutely. of the day. So at, at, at the very minimum, we want you to be on there for five minutes to allow your, your breathing and heart to come to its resting rate. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. You did awesome. 21 minutes, 105 average watts. 95, 95 strides per minute, uh, yeah. one, uh, 182 sprint strides per minute, and 480 sprint average watts. Awesome, and then you can email yourself a summary. You can, yeah, we have awesome. some much more exciting analytics that are in the works for the software. I'm excited to hear about these analytics, yeah. too. There's some really cool stuff that's in the works right now. Well, let's get you on the cooling bed. I am, I am so sore. <laughs> so Holy right now, you're cow. gonna feel the burn walking from here to the chair or to the table. When you get off the table, you'll be surprised at how much better you feel immediately. So we're just getting the cooling bed plugged in. Wow, this is great. So this analytic system, so I'll be able to get um, this full table of results in and then I'll be able to see maybe a day-to-day. -day. Um, much, much more exciting than Tell that, me actually. more, yeah, yeah tell so, us more. Um, this, this data set is not particularly exciting. What we've captured here is your average watts for the entirety of the, the session. Yeah. Um, and then your you know, average sprint watts, your average strides per minute, and then the average strides per minute during your sprint. So it's, it's some metrics with respect to your performance, and if you're to do the same protocol consistently, and you know, your, your sprint watts average is increasing, you can, sort of note that increase in strength and endurance. Okay, so, so you're seeing yourself grow over time. In a, in a very crude, basic data set you are. Um, what's, what's in the works and what's very exciting, and go ahead, go ahead and lay down. Awesome, yeah, let's do it. Feel the cooling coming in. Feel the cooling in. I'll lay down now. And so, um, okay, so give me more on the analytics and then we'll talk about what's going on here. We're, we'll actually be able to incorporate real-time physiological monitoring. You know, measure things like the electrical output of your muscle throughout the workout. Oh, whoa, so you gotta put little um, uh, measures for uh, electricity. Yeah. yeah. Wow, so electrodes, there, right. There, there's some very cool physiological monitoring integration that's in the process that's in development. Um, being able to, you know, select your protocol, the intensity, the modifications of it based on your heart rate variability how you slept the night before, your activity level that day, mm -hmm. and your readiness score for exercise. So all of this data wow. being crunched and the, the metadata over time is actually really, really exciting. We're gonna be able to have much more informed, educated protocols to drive specific benefits across awesome. different demographics. So yep. um, you get to pick what kind of, uh, uh, your the machine learning can tell you what kind of a workout you're ready for that day based on your sleep and your yeah. other levels of previous days of workout. Precisely, and there's, there's some really great pieces of tech um, that, that can help you know that. Awesome, Yeah. and so what's going on right now? So I'm laying on the same like 45 degree cooling pad, it's going all the way from yeah. my calves to, the, to my head, to the back of my head. We got the back of your neck cooled, which is really important. Yes. There's actually a lot of blood flow yes. there. And um, my legs are elevated. 
they're elevated so we can get that good low back contact. Oh, so you, can, you know, yeah. So by elevating yeah. your legs, you get the, the back contact on there. The entirety of the back is being cooled, the back of your legs. So this is really effective in pulling the heat out of you. Um, it's almost like a dry cold plunge as you're laying here. It is like a dry cold plunge, yeah, yeah exactly. And there's, there's some very well documented benefits to intermittent cold exposure with respect to norepinephrine production, yeah. glutathione production, the reduction of various inflammatory markers, um, as well as what it can do for your metabolism. So some of the benefits of, of cryo and, and intermittent cooling are also built into this system, and it's the synergy between all these different elements, between the blood flow restriction, the way that it's delivered through the cooling, the wide liquid filled cuff, in conjunction with that 21 minute interval based workout, that's really what sets us apart and makes this such a powerful platform. I think what you described with the, uh, with the legs being elevated and having the back fully laid flat and the pelvis laid flat mm -hmm. is so important. I think we frequently miss that when we uh, try and target the whole lower body that this this aspect's really really crucial yeah you can feel your your respiratory rate and your heart rate kind of dropping back to its baseline totally and yeah. it feels so good nice oh yeah my heart rate's probably like 80 beats per minute right now yeah yeah so i always i always you know encourage people to as much as possible get in a nice deep meditative state yeah to do some deep breathing introduce some more oxygen into their bloodstream and when people leave, you know, they, they commonly report what we refer to as the Vasper high, where yeah. you get that same post-workout, sort of not just an endorphin rush or release, but just real true sense of well-being. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're calm and peaceful and energized and alert at the same time. Yes. It just feels like everything's working. working. Your brain's turned on exactly. in, in a beautiful way. Exactly. Um, so we, we offer the first three sessions for free and uh, we've been accused of, of acting like drug dealers that way. Almost you you <laughs> are drug dealers. You even texted me and called it a, a Vasper knot. Vasper knot, yeah, <laughs> because we're based out of the NASA Ames Research Park. I love uh, that. Because of our relationship with NASA, you know, people who are regular, people who own a system, they're referred to as Vasper knots. And I love that. You're officially part of the squad now. I love it. Yeah. Um, Vasper knot for life. Yes. For everyone that's watching that is involved in these different sectors where this could be applicable. Um, so everything from the uh, army all the way to athletes, to hospitals, um, what other yeah. sector am I missing? Any type of rehabilitation, any type of physical therapy, any type of, you know, movement is usually the part of most people's healing regimen. And in the case that somebody's physically compromised and can't engage in regular exercise, this can be a revolutionary powerful platform yes so any type of healing rehabilitation geriatrics physical therapy I mean it's even being used in great success in things like cardiac rehab in Texas there's a few yeah. heart hospitals that are doing some amazing work with Vasper um, and then of course professional athletics human performance companies yeah. professional athletes special forces NASA astronauts anybody that's having to perform at a high level it's an incredible thing that's going to support you and then there's a, a tremendous amount of entrepreneurs and people that recognize the value proposition here, recognize the importance of an optimized endocrine system yep. for all of, yes. for quality of life, life yeah. for performance, for cognitive, for everything. Yeah. And, and there's, we have a number of these in private homes. Yep. Yeah. So whether you're private home or anything in physical therapy or rehabilitation or athletics, um, then just vasper.com, we have the link in the bio. Yeah. Um, we, uh, they're currently selling the systems, uh, $45,000 for a system right now. Um, yes. And then you can, um, you can get the system in uh, to any one of the centers, so for use for a private home or for in a center, use for, um, for lots of different people and uh, different reasons. And you guys, maybe we can mention some of the other um, aspects of the Vasper medical technology that's being pushed, whatever is we're able to talk about um, on the show. The, the next. There, there's some extremely exciting research that's on the verge of being public, uh, being published, as well as... I do have to say that my whole system, yeah. like you were saying, the Vasper not high yeah. when you leave, 
I'm totally feeling high right now. Totally. I'm feeling so good. I could take on the world, Absolutely. but I'm also very calm. Yeah. So I'm super vigilant, but also super calm. Yeah. And so the, the balance in those two is fantastic. And then I can, my, my physiology feels really, really put together right now. Like yeah. that I actually stretched it to some of its limits. Yeah. So, you know, that homeostatic capacity being swung into one side and now coming back to equilibrium feels really good versus it just being static all day. Totally. Yeah. And you would be amazed with any consistent and regular use, the impact that this has on your athletic performance and just your physical well-being is really, really incredible. So we see people, you know, coming back and reporting personal records and whatever Ooh. their medium is, yeah. or just doing things that normally they'd be sore from for days afterwards and being like, you know, feeling brand new immediately afterwards. So yeah. for some people that's gardening for two hours and their back doesn't hurt. For other people it's running a triathlon and wow. being fully functioning the next day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that vast difference between those two. Yeah. Basically, if, if you can benefit from exercise, if you can benefit from movement, then you are a Vasper client. Yeah. You can benefit from Vasper. Which is everyone. Which everyone is can everybody. benefit from movement. So this, yeah. this truly is for everybody. It's universal that way in its application and its benefit. It's not that bad. It's the price of a car. And a lot of people, when you see it that way, it makes sense. You're like, oh, if I'm buying a car, I should also potentially look into buying something so that I live a healthy day-to-day -day life for as long as possible and feel this incredible feeling. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. Do you feel like your breathing and heart is sort of back to baseline at this point? Yeah, my, I feel really, really good. Awesome. I think this aspect of it is so important. I'm sure you guys went through the R&D of just using the machine and then you were like, oh yeah, then this, this aspect when it's the, it's like you said, it's the yogic process of laying yeah. down afterward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've definitely done Vasper and skipped this part, and when you, when you actually go through the full protocol, there's a notable impact that, totally. that this transitional phase of, of laying down on your back, allowing your, your respiratory rate to come back to baseline, it's an important part. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, yeah, I mean. Well, how much time do you usually do on the cooling pad? People will spend as much as 10, 15 minutes sometimes. Yeah. Most people I'd say are between five and 10 minutes. Five and 10. Yeah. We're at what, the five mark right now? Probably at least, yeah. At least five, okay, yeah. we'll do a couple. I can, I can tell you exactly, actually. I know, I think we went 10, man. We're at 10, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll do another minute on here and then okay. we'll go. Because it feels so good. <laughs> See, 10 minutes. That exercise was, feels like it was so much longer and this feels like it was so much shorter. But that's, that's, that's the beauty of it, is the whole process is half an hour. Yep. There is a cumulative benefit with any workout regime. It's particularly true with Vasper in that maintaining that optimized hormone profile for a concentrated period of time, that's what's gonna produce the best lasting results. So if you can mm -hmm. consistently get on Vasper three times a week, yeah. tremendous benefit to be gained. Yeah. And typically, people that own them in their home, just based on the access, they'll do it five, six, in some cases, seven days a week. How often do you have to uh, recycle the water? You know, next to never. There's some slow evaporation that'll take place, and the water level will very gradually drop. You there's a, a float sensor within the tank. Reusing it. It will okay. indicate on the tablet. Yeah, there's a circulating pump so the water doesn't stay stagnant. Good. So it's cold, it's constantly in motion, yep. and then we'll even treat it with a little bit of iodine to prevent algae and other things from growing in Sweet. it. Sweet. Yeah. So it's kind of like a water bed. <laughs> it is like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a cold water bed. Cold water bed. <laughs> Which can be used independent of a session on a hot day. And, uh, oh, on a hot day. Super nice yeah. on its own, yeah. That's true, yeah. It's like you said, a cold plunge, a dry cold plunge. Precisely, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, I feel so good. I know that I'm gonna be very interestingly sore. You, so you shouldn't. You'll know in your legs that you worked out, but it yeah. is not the same laid on set of muscle soreness that you would get from CrossFit or a spin class or any other type of intensive anaerobic fitness. And those, those are all great things to do, 
this is much more low impact. We're not breaking down muscle tissue in the same way, and that's where that lactic acid can get trapped and create that delayed onset of muscle soreness. Here, we were able to concentrate it rapidly for the duration of the protocol, and that's why you feel the burn so intensely. You might know that you worked out, but you're not gonna have any problem walking downstairs. There's not gonna be any, any type of painful soreness whatsoever, which most people are surprised by. With how intense the protocol can feel when you're in the chair, oh, sometimes yeah. people expect that they're gonna be it's totally smoked sore. the rest of the day. Yeah. I promise you, you will not be. Yeah, I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't feel that, I don't, let me stand up. Yeah. You can come into a VASPR session very sore from other physical training, from an intensive workload, and then be amazed at how much better you feel an hour following your session. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, surprisingly right now, normally after leg day, it's really hard to do things. Yeah. And like right now, it, it feels good. I'll, I'll report again later. I'll tonight report again tomorrow with like a comments, letting them know how I slept. Nice. As well in the video. I'll let you guys know. Peter, you want to join us for the ending? Sure. Awesome. Thank you. Come on back in. Okay. So you're now a Vaspernaut. <laughs> I'm now a Vaspernaut. Hopefully we can get more people to become Vaspernaut. So, okay, so for the people living in the Bay Area, you can go down to NASA Research Park, yep. the Ames Research Park, and go see Vasper there. Just show your, your driver's license at the gate, exactly. let, let them know you're going to Vasper, and they will happily let you on base. Yep. Uh, yeah. and Actually, then, if you type in uh, Vasper systems into Google Maps, it'll take you to our parking lot. Or ways. And, and then you can also book on the website. You can book online. Well. Book a website or Vasper. session online. Mm -hmm. um, so for those that are not um, in the Bay Area, but that are interested, next time you're around, definitely stop by the research park, but also, um, online pass around this link to the different uh, physical therapists um, to the di different rehabilitation centers um, to different sectors of the uh, to the of, of the army or of um, even private clients um, or uh, all these different types of, of of sectors that are that can that can use athletes so many different um, sports organizations football teams basketball teams baseball teams um, uh, soccer teams all uh, we have a good network of, of these types of people so that we're trying to funnel into you because what better way to to mesh these networks than to get them to their peak performance faster we actually have uh, Vasper systems in different parts of the United States Canada and even Europe right now what cities can people go in well if you if you go to Vasper.com and then on the right upper corner it says schedule a session yeah. it'll tell you all of the locations and how to get in touch with them. So for example, if you're in London, England, you can do Vasper. Yeah, if you are awesome. in, uh, uh, in Dallas, Texas, or different places oh, cool. in the United States, you can do it as well. Yeah. So it's all on the website and all the contact information is there so you can directly connect with those facilities. Boom, it's even in different cities around the world. That's, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So you can go get your physical session across those different cities. Um, let's do a Let's do a quick summary. Let me see how I can do with this. Let me see how, how I did. Okay, so what we, what, what, when, what normally happens with, with children is children are moving around a lot with high energy and they have, they're able to have higher concentrations of lactic acid within their muscles and then the growth hormone from the pituitary gland gets secreted to those areas for faster muscle growth and rebuilding. And children already have a high level of growth hormone, so they're just boosting that hormone level even more. And this is why <coughs> children recover so quickly. When yes. they get injured, yes. they recover very quickly. You don't really need medical yes. intervention. And their homeostatic capacity is higher, and that's, that's right. part of what the um, endocrine system is about that anatomy, their ability to go back to equilibrium. They're a great um, example of what it's like to have all your anabolic hormone levels on board. When you look yeah. at their resilience, their energy levels, their quality of sleep for the most part. Um, so we're, this, you know, people have referred to this as a time machine for your physiology. Like time especially machine Especially if, if you're yeah. later in life. Um, and, and then, so then, okay, now that we get to this point of being later in life as an adult. Mm -hmm. And once we get to the adult stage, 
it becomes more difficult for us to retain a higher concentration of lactic acid within our muscle because our venous system, our blood flow is taking the lactate and moving it. The limb is larger. The limb is larger So it's as harder well. to concentrate harder lactate to concentrate. In, a, in, a, in a larger area than it is a smaller limb yes. of a child. And then also the venous system is constantly trying to move it out. There's three things that take you backwards. So number one is the size of the muscle. It's bigger. Yes. So you can no longer concentrate like to get those levels at, the, at that level that you could when you were a child with a smaller muscle. The second one is that we're closer to the adult height. So your natural hormone levels are slowing down because your growth cycle is slowing down. The third one is that we don't have time to run around all day. Yeah. So every 10 years after puberty, that signal to the brain gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Yeah. And this is where the aging process moves forward. And uh, you lose muscle tissue, you have uh, osteoporosis at some point. And if you go to a medical professional and ask them, you know, what can I do about this? In most cases, they'll tell you this is normal. You're just getting old. Yeah. But the truth is our hormones don't decline because we age. We age because our hormones decline. So what we're doing here is we're, by biomimicking this physiology of a child and concentrating lactic acid under the compression, we're hacking your brain into secreting additional hormone levels because the brain basically gets a signal you've destroyed the muscle tissue, mm -hmm. which you have not. Mm -hmm. So some people have referred to this as fountain of use type response. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's like finding a back door to the endocrine system. And the endocrine system is the essence of your health. We can talk about you know, digestive system. All, all of those are very important organs, yeah. but the endocrine system, if you do the hormonal profile, you can, you can know precisely how healthy you are. I'm, I'm, I'm in love with this, um, and I'm really excited to continue propelling um, what you're building with these hacks into human performance and health to the rest of the world. Thanks. So you're so welcome. It, it, we need to get this, and like we said, you know, we were talking about this at the beginning, but sitting is the new smoking. Mm. And can we, can we mention any of the insight into what's going on next? Or, no worries if not. No, no, we, we, we are developing, this technology is sort of developing on many different levels, and there's a saying that I think everybody will agree with, that there's no end to better. We can always do something better. So yes. there's as Sebastian described, we're, we're introducing the physiological monitoring uh, platform to this uh, device. Yes. And uh, we are right next to Google, where a lot of people are spending hours and hours coding on a computer. So we basically designed a platform that uh, addresses the movement. It sort of could be compared possibly somewhat to a rowing machine. However, that allows you also to move the blood, Oof. to control the core body temperature so you don't have the inflammation from being stag yeah. stagnant, and uh, push blood, increase vascular performance to your brain. All the great things that we would like to do while we're sitting at a desk. So that's something that's coming down the pike as well. I was so excited. That one is so exciting. The next, um, so putting together a lot more of the analytics that are going on here. Um, having better insights into the data while I'm doing it here, and then also this next iteration with when we're sitting down and we're working. How can we use Vasper while we're working? Oh my God, and what is that gonna do for our body and our blood flow? I'm sure that the way, you know how when we hunch over the desk and we work, sometimes our breathing becomes more shallow and we seem to, um, we're concentrating our focus on that. I feel like when we're using Vasper technologies while we're working at the computer, it's gonna be a whole new ball game. People are gonna be concentrated in new ways. They're gonna have different um, feeling of their body while they're working. This is- You can measure that impact in the brain state and the brain waves. Um, yeah. The, the, the state that you're in is, is very measurable. And with regards to moving the needle, you know, where your productivity is, is your lifeline, you know, even a 1% difference can be worth a tremendous amount, and I think, uh, I think we're going to move a lot more than that. And we have to ask you at least one of our simulation questions before we get off the show. Just the one question about what is the most beautiful thing in the world? What is the most beautiful thing in the world? Yeah. Living life to the fullest is the most beautiful thing. And, uh, <clears throat> 
taking control of your own health, being proactive about health. Uh, and uh, that's where, you know, we wake up in the morning and it's, it's an awesome day. And when we wake, go to sleep at night, it was an awesome day and we started all over again. So again, when you look at children, the reason we are, the children are so much fun to be with is because they don't have any hidden agendas. They're full of life. When they laugh, they truly laugh. And um, sometimes when we go through normal life and normal challenges in life and forget some of those wonderful times and how we, you know, how, how it is to be totally healthy and hormonally balanced and hormonal balance also leads to emotional balance. So that's when everything comes together. Living life to the fullest. Yeah. What do you think, Sebastian? The beautiful thing in the world. You know, I think, I think experiencing true freedom within yourself to express the entirety of your being and share that with other people. And of course, being in good health is the foundation of that. Yeah. So when, when, you, when you're totally free within yourself, you empower other people to do the same thing. And the vibration of that, I mean, that to me is one of the most beautiful things in the world for sure. I've absolutely loved having Vasper on the show. This has been a blast. We're excited to continue collaborating in the future. Awesome, man. Thanks, Thank Vasper. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. tuning in. We greatly appreciate you tuning in. Um, if you guys had a good time, share the content with other people. Let's get this out to more people, this new technology, yeah, being yeah. able to biohack human performance and human health. Also, give us a comment below with your thoughts. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Go to Vasper.com. Book a session for yourself across the world. And everyone, support us on Patreon. We need to continue sustaining the studio and sustaining, amplifying the beautiful creations and interventions and voices of people that are changing the world. So join us there. Thanks, Ron Vargas, our producing partner. And we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Peace. Thank you.